Hey guys, what is up? We are back here again with another weekly episode of anime, manga, video games, and more news. Um, and starting today, it is the eighth episode, meaning eight weeks have passed. Okay, and um, we're gonna start off from Monday. Some news that came out from Monday up until today, Wednesday. And to start off, it does start off with some bad news. Unfortunately, a well-known known voice actor by the name of Motomo Kyokawa has passed away. He passed away on August 17th, so he passed away uh, early last week. And his family did have a private funeral for him. The reason for his death, first he got, first he was 87 years old when he passed away. And the reason for his death is uh, pneumonia, okay? Um, Motomo uh, Kyokawa, he's known for lending his voice in popular anime franchises such as Evangelion, uh, Genesis, ne Neo Genesis Evangelion, also in um, Helsing and Helsing Ultimate, as well as in Mobile Suit Gundam. So the roles he played in uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion in the article, it says he played a role of Kozu Fuyusuki in both the anime and in the movies as well as the four uh reboot films within the franchise he played uh walter in helsing and helsing ultimate as well as Te tem ray in mobile suit gundam i'm guessing in the very first mobile suit gundam and it says that uh he was born in 1935 and in 1957 he joined the high theater company he then joined uh, Haikyuu in 1968. He worked both as a stage actor and a voice actor. And he played many other roles in um, anime, such as Norman Berg in The Big O. Uh, he played uh, Shime in The Time of Eve. He played uh, Gain in By the Grace of the Gods. So he had many roles over the years as a voice actor. I don't know specifically what works he did as a stage actor but probably he played some very noticeable uh roles during his days you know on stage in theater as such but um it's very sad to hear that a uh, legendary voice actor has unfortunately passed away but he will be remembered for you know taking part in such phenomenal works that are still enjoyed by many people today like many of the works that he voiced at in many of us grew up on these series okay evangelion mobile suit gundam helsing a lot of us grew up on these series so we can always revisit these series and watch him play notable characters that we all liked or probably disliked um hearing his voice in there so you know my condolences to the kiyokawa family for your for your loss okay we had to start off with the bad news but we do have a uh, I, this one was th this one I don't think any of us was I don't think any of us was prepared for this news and it's not bad news it's not terrible news it's more of a what the f news <laughs> okay it, it's dealing with Sailor Moon so probably some of you have heard of it I saw it on t Twitter and I saw it on Facebook and believe you me, I thought they were joking, but it's real. And it's dealing with Sailor Moon. So the article says that there was a live action Sailor Moon series during the 90s. It was a pilot and it was never revealed until now. Mind you, I saw the video on Facebook and I watched it without like, you know, turning on the sound or anything. So it's like half action and you know this the cartoons that came out during the 90s how they look like the 80s and the 90s so it will go from live action like how you see me right now and then when they transform it, it goes into cartoon and it dealt with more outer space it did it really did um you can actually watch the video on youtube if you go uh type into the search engine on youtube official saiban s-a-b-a-n moon pilot episode 1994 to maker sailor moon you can watch the video i think it's like a minute or nearly two minutes worth of, of footage and i'm going to read the article it was so freaking weird <laughs> it was really weird 
weird. But um, it states, the full pilot for an American live action Sailor Moon TV show conceived and scrapped in the 1990s has finally made its way to the public former Bondi America president Frank Ward. No, made its way to the public, period. Former Bondi America president Frank Ward gave permission to Lost Media documentary YouTuber Ray Mona to publish the footage obtained from the Library of Congress. The pilot is included near the end of a two-part documentary series about the production story behind this unaired piece of television. The footage starts at, oh, so it's like a whole, she uploaded like the whole nearly two hour film, but the, the part where you see the footage, it starts at like an hour and 43 minutes and 48 seconds. And it, God, I saw the video and it was just so freaking weird. But you can you can look it up on on YouTube. Uh, they say the idea for an Americanized Sailor Moon began in 1993, but Bondi ultimately scrapped it in favor of an English dub based on the original animated footage, footage by Toei Animation. This would become the DIC Entertainment dub, infamous for its own content changes and script liberties. The, per the proposed American show would have blended live action footage by Power Rangers producers. What the frick? Power Rangers was behind this? <laughs> I'm sorry, Power Rangers producers were behind this? Um, Renaissance Atlantic and brand new animation by the North American studio Toon Makers. The team aimed to premiere the show in 1994 on Fox, potentially in the same block as Power Rangers. What? the hell actually i probably would have enjoyed it because of how weird it is because they did some wild stuff back in the 90s and in in the early 2000s and i think a lot of us despite us say oh it's cringe and everything i think a lot of us would have enjoyed it because majority of us were kids at the times or like pre-teens we would have thoroughly enjoyed it like a lot of us will say oh it's cringe right now because we're older but believe you me, if this actually was allowed to air, they didn't scrap the idea, they went fully forward with this whole idea and gave how much episodes, if it's even 25 episodes or, 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 or 40 episodes, a lot of us would have been sitting in front of that television as I speak right now and been watching that like a hawk. Okay, just like how we was watching the Sailor Moon anime as kids in the 90s, going into the 2000s, as well as watching the Dragon Ball Z, coming home every single day after 2 or 3 o'clock from school and running to the television, turning it on to go on, on Cartoon Network and watch Tsunami when it used to air as prime time, a lot of us would enjoy this series. I can guarantee you that. I'm calling myself out. I probably would have enjoyed this. And if I look back on it today, I'm like, yeah, I, I watched that, okay? So, yeah, that's actually, wow. The show known, uh, cool and Quilly, known online as Saban Moon after Power Rangers producer Hi Saban has a cult amongst a cult status among die-hard American Sailor Moon fans. A music video made from a series of cuts from the 17-minute pilot was privately shown at an event at Anime Expo, but was taped by a member in the audience and then leaked online. Only now is the footage available for public viewing in its entirety. Wow. Based on the pilot, will you have watched the full? Yeah, hell yeah, I would have watched it. I would have watched it. I mean, like I said, if we, if this came out, if they actually went through with the plan, right? Because they were starting it. There obviously was the pilot. So they was meant to have an actual TV show on air alongside with the anime version and any of the other shows that came out during the 90s targeted towards kids pre-teens and teens a lot of us would have watched it we would never have questioned it especially if you grew up during the late 90s mid to late 90s going into the 2000s and you grew up watching dragon ball z when it first aired when sailor moon first aired on television a lot of us would have grown up watching it. We only, like I said, we only say, Ugh, oh, that looks cringe. It's because a lot of us probably are out of that phase now. Some of us are still diehard Sailor Moon fans. Some of us are still diehard Dragon Ball Z fans and such. But I can guarantee you about more than 50% of us who grew up during, during that time, we would, like I said, come home straight from school, after school, go straight 
clean ourselves up, probably eat dinner or eat dinner and sit in front of the television and go watch those series. We would. I myself would. I probably enjoyed the hell out of it, okay? I would be like, yo, I need to see this. I need to see the Sailor Moon American version after seeing Sailor Moon, the, the cartoon anime version right after. I would thoroughly enjoy it. I'm not going to lie. So um, it's actually pretty funny that they tried to make this happen, but unfortunately it never saw fruition. It never came to be. But I'm glad at least we got to see what could have been, what could have also shaped our childhoods during the late 1990s going into the early 2000s so that's actually that's actually pretty crazy man things that could have been but never happened now for moving on we have a manga series that was licensed by viz media that's actually getting an anime that's going to be premiering on netflix on october 27th probably some of you have saw it circulating on social media but it is called romantic killer okay so it's getting an anime in october a lot of shows are uh, i mean this october is going to be the most ridiculous season of anime at least for me personally since 2016 because 2016 i would say from 2015 to 2016 were the craziest years of anime or seasons of, of, of anime that I've seen and I haven't seen a crazy season of anime or a year of anime since call it six years ago okay and now we're coming this year 2022 they started off kind of okay let's test the waters right now summer is kind of eh. spring was all right but this fall going into winter 2023 do you know how much series not only winter 2023, but overall 2023 is looking to have some bangers. Vinland Saga, and on top of that, Vinland Saga is about to end. We don't know when, but it's about to hit those final chapters. How I know I saw it on social media, Twitter. But um, reading the article for Romantic Killer, they state that the official Shonen Jump Plus page for Wataru Momose's romantic killer manga revealed on Tuesday that the manga is getting an anime adaptation on Netflix on October 27th. So Viz Media has licensed the manga and it describes the story when gamer Anzu gets transported to a world of hot guys, it's like she's in a dream, someone else's dream. Momose launched the manga in Shonen Jump Plus in July 2019 and ended it in June 2020. Shueisha published the fourth and final complied book volume in September. Oh, they, they kind of butchered the uh, the article. They said September 2002, so we went back. It's September 20... Wait, what? Shueisha published the fourth and final complied book volume in September 2002. We're in 2020, so it's going to be... The final volume is going to be this year, 2022. I, I hope they fix the article. <laughs> That, that kind of butchered but they, they do need to fix that last line so if it's you know actually that's actually kind of surprising this is the second series i find out other than um uh tomo chan is a girl the second series that i know about currently that um one its manga counterpart has ended already at least two three years or so prior and then finally years later is finally getting an anime you know, you would have thought, okay, they probably would have got an anime during the time it was running or at least probably a year. No, it's like years later, they're finally getting anime adaptation, you know. So that's kind of good in a way because at least they can't say uh, they caught up to where it's currently at and they have to wait for a certain amount of time to pass before they can say it's a season two or a season three. Um, in my case, I don't know what they're going to do with um, Tomo Chan as a girl if they're going to adapt the entire manga or they're just going to adapt up to a certain point for like 12 to 13 episodes still no no more news has came out since they just dropped the promotional video last month in which i did a reaction video to it so we don't know any news i will have to keep a lookout for that but congratulations to romantic killer fans you guys are finally getting an anime uh since it ended like two years ago so i'm um, I look forward to seeing actually i might check out this series when it does drop on netflix in in october it's basically the end of october so they may just drop all the episodes 
sorry, all at the same time. Talking about uh, anime, this is an anime film. And no, it's not the One Piece film Red. It's actually Dragon Ball Super superhero film. It actually came out here in the, uh, it came out outside of Japan. And so far, it's here in the United States. And right now, it's sitting at over $32 million right now. It crosses, it, the last time I checked, it was 24 or somewhere in the 20, 20 millions. Now it's over 32 million. So they say the film is now number one on the global block box office. So then again, um, film read for One Piece didn't get out of Japan yet. So we'll, we're still waiting for to see film read. So it, it'll change eventually. So they say Crunchyroll reported on Monday that the Dragon Ball Super superhero anime film earned an estimate of US dollars 32 million in its opening week in over 31 markets. The company announced that the film is now number one at the global box office. The company revealed that the earnings for several countries opening weekend in Australia, it was 535,000, New Zealand was 117,000, Mexico was, oh, well then again, Mexico, Mexico doesn't play when it comes to Dragon Ball, okay? Overall, Dragon Ball, Mexico is the biggest supporter, so this number, 3.7 million dollars, they don't play. They don't play. They're the biggest Dragon Ball fans in the world. Bigger than Japan, bigger than the US. They are the biggest fans. So it's not, not surprising that they have the most on this list. The second to them will be Argentina with 1.5 million and Peru is 1.2 million. Chile is 675,000. United Kingdom is 800,000. Netherlands is 150,000. And the Middle East is 420,000. It was not surprising to see. I'm surprised they didn't put Mexico on top because Mexico has the highest. It's not surprising. I, why why would anybody be surprised? Mexico is the biggest Dragon Ball fans in the world. When Broly came out in 2018, when Super with the fight with um Goku versus uh who was it again? When he when he went MUI and how it broke the internet. Man. So congratulations to Dragon Ball Superhero movie. You know, I didn't think it was gonna do that well, but then again, it's Gohan. Gohan and Piccolo deserve to their shine for the longest time. They've been sidelined since after the Boo Saga. The Boo Saga was kind of their downfall. How I know, I watched Dragon Ball Z too many times to realize this, okay? So after the Boo Saga, it was just like, it's only the Goku and Vegeta show. Freak everybody else, it's Goku and Vegeta. I love Vegeta, don't get me wrong, but that's how it is, screw everybody else. Now moving on to some games, Sonic fans, I think you will be very happy with this news. So they say, Sonic Frontiers Games trailer reveals November 8th launch. So it's coming out November 8th in less than three months, two and a half months, and then the game is launched out. So they say uh, the Gamescom events opening night live stream unveiled on Tuesday a new trailer for Sonic Frontiers, Sega's new game in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and it reveals that the game will launch on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch, and PC via on November 8th. The video preview story exploration and combat and i sonic fans you tell me when was the what was what was the last good sonic video game when did that come out because i know some sonic fans have been complaining that we haven't they haven't had a good game by saga sega in quite a while so when was the last year a really good song sonic game came out because I know it's been on the rise. It's in its 30th year. They're celebrating their 30th anniversary. And they have a bunch of products. A lot of stuff coming out for the 30th anniversary celebration. So I do know they have a few games. The movies that came out. I think they're coming out with a third Sonic live action movie. And just a lot is happening. So the game will also get an animated prologue featuring Knuckles titled Sonic Frontiers Prologue. 
so they oh so the last uh the latest game sonic mania was the last game that came out back and it was shipped in august 2017 for ps4 xbox one switch and the pc so that was the last game so five years ago sonic mania and it's been you know quite a while so it's very fitting for the sonic 38th anniversary that a new game is coming out and so far from what i've seen from the trailers and everything it looks pretty good but again like i said because i never played sonic games to all sonic fans do tell me what to you what was the last good sonic game i don't know if sonic mania was the last good game or if there was a game before that that you know <clears throat> was universally at least within the fandom of sonic fans was the last good game before before this new one that's going to be launched out on November 8th. And now to end off, you know, today's episode, uh, this is actually very surprising. Uh, I, I don't think it, it, it was something that I think anybody was really prepared for. But for anybody that's a fan of the horror, I guess, psychological manga Parasite, Remember, there was an anime that came out either in 2014, 2015, also known as Parasite the Maximum, Maxim, that came out very successful. I believe it had about 24, 25 episodes. Still is talked about to this day. Probably not as big as when it came out, when the anime came out, but there are still fans to this day, still highly regarded to this day. And it is getting it inspired actually a korean live action that is getting an adaptation on netflix and for what i do know them korean movies you saw the you saw the movie one of the high one of the best korean movies that came out within the past i would say five years or so train to busan anybody saw that movie that was a good zombie movie bro that was an amazing horror movie. I, I think I probably saw another one, but another Korean horror movie or something. But bro, I love Train to, to Busan. So they say that Netflix announced on Wednesday today that it is producing a new South Korean live action adaptation of Hitoshi Iwaki's Parasite manga called Kiseju Kise the Great. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Netflix will stream the show exclusive. Oh, it's going to be a show. It's not going to be a movie. Oh, okay. Um, Because they just said live action adaptation. So I was just assuming it was a movie. So it's actually going to be a show. It's going to be shown exclusively uh, worldwide. We don't know when it's going to come out because uh, it doesn't say. So the manga most recently inspired television adaptation in 20. 14 okay and two live action films in 2014 and 2015 so there obviously was live actions that came out prior to this uh south korean one that's going to come out we don't know when um prop i could probably assume it's probably next year or probably in 2024 but since it's going to be a tele it's going to be a series um that's going to show on netflix probably it's going to be a few episodes i don't know I don't know, but I'm actually pretty excited. Um, I do want to know for the two live action films that came out in 2014, 2015, how well did those two do? Because I don't even remember hearing there was a live action movie in the first place. Or did I? I'm trying to jog my memory right now. I think I, think I do remember, but I at least hit, remember hearing about one. I didn't even know there was two. And that came out respectively after the anime okay and then both the same year as the anime and then the following year which was 2015 but obviously the manga was came out during the 90s it came out in 1990 and ended in 1995 and then many years later 2014 it finally got an anime adaptation that basically started from the beginning and completed towards the end so you know um i'll be on the lookout to see when this uh movie i mean series does come out um any news in regards of the date it comes out the month it comes out the year it comes out in and actually go check it out myself because i did watch a little bit of the anime a little bit back in 2014 and i did like because it did show on toonami at the time so um 
I'll be on the lookout. Pretty excited about this. Nothing wrong with seeing, you know, more Korean horror shows or films because they're actually pretty good. They're pretty good. So let's see what their spin on on a famous series such as Parasite will be like. So guys, do tell me in the comment section on uh, what your thoughts were in regards to the news that came out so far this week regarding uh, the passing of Kiyokawa, known for his roles in Evangelion, about the almost live action slash animated Sailor Moon series that was originally supposed to come out. What were your thoughts on that? Um, Romantic Killer finally getting anime two years after its ending coming out in October, late October. Um, also with Dragon Ball Super, if you guys, guys who watch it already, how do you feel about the movie? Those who are attempting to go watch it, um, hopefully you guys have fun. Okay, hopefully you guys have fun. But those who did watch the movie, do tell me your thoughts on how you felt the movie went. Um, especially in regards to Gohan and Piccolo, you know, finally getting their shine after how many years? I, I would say probably two decades or so. Guys, Sonic fans, how do you feel about this new game that's going to launch out in November? Okay, again, when was the last good Sonic movie, uh, game that came out? When was the last one that came out? And as well as Parasite fans, how do you feel about hearing that it's getting another live live action adaptation but this time it's going to take place in south korea how do you feel about hearing those news regarding your favorite manga series slash anime series and the links are in the description box you guys go check that out and i'm kimmy channel of anime legends and i will see you guys later bye